The radio operators had no easy task. The transmitter had to be watertight, and besides, there was not enough room on the raft to rig an aerial of any length. Rawby solved this problem by making a balloon. Our parrot was particularly interested in radio. Here she is seen closely watching Rawby's experiment, producing hydrogen for his balloon by mixing a special powder with seawater. Once the balloon is big enough, all Rawby send it aloft and get just the right length of aerial. All went well until the parrot decided to bite through the aerial wire, ensuring that the balloon went even higher. The radio operator had his set in a corner of the bamboo hut. With a transmitting strength of seven watts, direct contact was made with the radio ham in Norway at the opposite end of the world. This in itself was a sort of world record. Here contact has just been made with a radio ham in Los Angeles, who had picked up our message announcing that we are halfway across the Pacific. This means that after 45 days, we had already covered a distance more than that between Oslo and the North Pole, which meant that we had exactly one half of our voyage left. We were now 2,500 miles from the nearest land. We were entirely alone in a world of our own. Meanwhile, the radio operators had set up their transmitter under the sail, which was still soaked with seawater. It was important to let the outside world know that we had reached land safe and sound. If we failed to get this news across within 36 hours, the radio ham in New Zealand would divulge his secret and aircraft and naval vessels would set off to scan the seas for us. It was a great moment for the radio operators when their equipment had been dried and linked up, only a matter of hours before our time ran out, and our message was picked up by amateurs in New Zealand and America, thus preventing the dispatch of any relief expedition. On the headland, facing the spot where we landed, we planted a coconut from Peru. We originally had 200 coconuts with us on the raft, and most of these had been eaten on the journey. The ones left over were planted in Polynesia in the native manner. We spent a week on our in uninhabited island. One morning, we spotted a white sail on the horizon on the other side of the calm lagoon, and we waved our flags to attract its attention. The small flag shown here is that of the New York Explorers Club, 